Indian WWE champion. We are very very proud of him. In fact, he has made India proud globally right from the Sher Dil attitude of achieving things to uh, the Bhangra to Indian food. Uh, to the warmth that we carry in our hearts despite being competitive he showed the world what india and indians are actually made of i promise you that this is going to be a very exciting and action packed live ladies and gentlemen boys and girls here we have live with us for the very first time our very own modern day maharaja what's, what's up every, everyone very up, very exciting i am good how are you i'm doing good just hanging out i'm excited to go on live and answer everyone's questions your workout posts are very inspiring what are the other things uh, besides working out that you have uh, indulged into recently yeah it's my uh, cbd brand it's uh, as of right now it's only available in america but I started experimenting with CBD during my injury and actually a little bit before that it's an excellent recovery product there's no it's non psychoactive meaning it doesn't alter it doesn't make you uh, like uh, feel drunk or high or anything like that it's not, it's drug free um and yeah it's just an excellent recovery product from everything from inflammation to sleep and yeah I've been using it every day it helped me along with my recovery and it's helping me now with my workouts because uh like as hard as I train I have to be able to recover So along with uh, like that, and I take also like supplements, protein, my diet. Everything is geared towards recovery. I get weekly massage. I see chiropractor every week, and uh, even in my house, I have all kinds of recovery devices: foam rollers and uh, massage guns and everything. So recovery is a big part. Wow! It it's commendable to know, despite being on recovery mode, all the things that you've been up to. Right now, it's around ten thirty a.m. in Florida. Yeah. So I guess yeah. you already had your breakfast, right? Uh, I had my breakfast already, already worked out, and now it's time for post-workout shake. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! So, can you show us what, what what's the post-workout shake like? Would you ma make it right in front of us here? Yeah. So this post-workout shake can also be just a meal replacement at any time. It's a very good breakfast any time during the day. It's like a good good meal option, but I. Uh, I usually have a protein shake right after my post workout because whey protein isolate isolated particular is very fast absorbing so the the brand that I use is Redcon 1 isolate protein you can use any protein whey protein or if you're vegan there's many vegan proteins available uh so what I do is I put two scoops of whey protein and um I I use frozen strawberries Yeah. And I and I actually freeze bananas too so they don't go bad. You can freeze bananas so I put a handful of strawberries, one banana, two scoops of protein and the secret ingredient kale. Kale oh. or spinach. So All right. Yeah, getting your greens is very important and um I use almond milk mm -hmm. but you can use water 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 or regular milk works just mm -hmm. as good and then for healthy fats healthy fats are very important also i use uh one tablespoon of peanut butter or wow. you can use uh avocado avocado is a very healthy uh fat so yeah so that those are the ingredients protein fruit peanut butter almond milk kale, kale or spinach All right. So, yeah, it's a good meal replacement. You can use it any time, breakfast, post-workout, dinner, lunch. Easy to make. Blend it up and uh yeah, it's great. So that healthy yet tasty shake, right? Oh, it tastes delicious. <laughs> I'm sure. But I read somewhere that you have given up on junk food like pizzas, chips, sodas since years now. How how do you manage it's commendable? Yeah, so <laughs> I okay, I I can't say that I've completely given up because every once in a while I do enjoy a cheat meal, maybe once every 2 weeks. Uh but it's also very important because uh like it resets your metabolism also. So a cheat meal can also like I don't call it a cheat meal, I call it a refeed meal because like it's planned. A cheat meal sometimes like it's not planned, you just end up doing it. But my refeed is very planned and it's to it's to increase my calories for the day. 
So your body doesn't get used to it because your body is very adaptive. So if, if you reduce your calories, your body will get used to that. And um, so if you spike it for one day, once every one week or two weeks, one week if you're lean, two weeks, um, you know, it kind of resets everything. And, and in the long run, you end up seeing better results. I'm, I'm sure. And in fact, after hearing that, I feel so much better because I used to feel so guilty when I indulge into some junk food on the weekends or once in a month. But it's nice to hear that we one can do that along with following a healthy routine, right? Yeah, just as long as the next day you get back on track. And also a mistake people make is after a cheat day, maybe they'll starve themselves the next day. That's not healthy to do either. Just, you know, enjoy yourself and then just go back to normal, whatever your plan was. Don't starve yourself because then it, your body just it gets a wrong message that all of a sudden, you know, you ate so much and then all of a sudden you starve it. So that's a wrong message, too. So, you know, just enjoy yourself and then go back to normal, normal diet the next day. So all the fitness enthusiasts, pay attention to this one coming from a very own modern day Maharaja. Chinder, you started, uh, you were fond of wrestling since you were three, right? So were yeah. you inspired by uh, your uncle Gama Singh, who was also a well-known wrestler? Yeah, yeah, very much so inspired by my uncle. And uh, yeah, I just loved uh, wrestling, all wrestlers. Uh, I grew up in Calgary. So Bret Hart is from there, Owen Hart is from there. Whole Stampede Wrestling, everybody was there. British Bulldog was there. Jim the Anvil Nightheart was there. Uh, my uncle Gamma used to wrestle for Stampede Wrestling at that time. And so, yeah, he was a huge... Uh, huge inspiration to me and then you know how he trained me and everything and even to this day I still keep in contact with him a lot and uh, you know he's doing very well so yeah hopefully uh, you know I can be the inspiration for the next generation you know uh, there's uh, our Indian youth I'm sure you already you know, are <laughs> yeah I'm excited you to see the future, future generations you already are to this generation and I'm sure it will be fantabulously encouraging and inspiring all the things that you do for the coming generation too. But despite uh, you being inspired by your uncle, why did your first trainer, uh, when you, you know, when you planned, when you decided to uh, take, take up wrestling professionally, why was Alan Kouage your first trainer? Yeah, so Alan Kowaj was uh, also, he was in the WWE as uh, Bad News Brown. He was pro wrestled everywhere as Bad News Alan. He was just an excellent coach. Uh, he, was, he, he was a local trainer there, and he was friends with my uncle Gamma. So, yeah, he trained me. Uh, his training was very tough. He was, before pro wrestling, he used to do judo, and he was a bronze medalist in the Olympics. And when he trained, he trained in Japan, like a very, very difficult style. So he trained us the same way, like so much conditioning work, so many push-ups. A lot of squats every day. Uh, yeah, he was just a, he was just an excellent trainer. But a lot of uh, he actually helped a lot of WWE superstars, uh, guys like Edge and Christian, uh, former WWE superstar Chris Jericho. Uh, he also like very he was very hands on with you know that whole generation of wrestlers at that time. So yeah, he helped out a lot. Well, I know you learn from the best, and we saw the results. You know, we know about your never say die attitude. But although you faced a difficult phase between 2014 to 2015, yet you came out victorious within a year's time. In 2017, you backed the WWE title. What motivated you? We'd all like to know because right now, the world is on a standstill. Everyone's on a lockdown. We could probably use that motivation for today. Yeah, what motivated me during that time was just... Um... Motivation comes from within. You got, you know what I mean? Like external motivation, it doesn't spark long term. You know, you have to find the motivation within. You have to find your reason, your why. So, you know, I found my why. I, uh, I just remembered like my childhood dream of being a WWE superstar. So when it was taken from me, I had many regrets. Like I felt like I didn't give it my all during my first run. So I always thought, you know, if I get a second chance, I'm going to rededicate my life to, you know, becoming a great WWE superstar, a WWE champion. And, um, yeah, within 10 months of coming back, I was WWE champion. So you just have to find your why. Everybody has an individual why. You know, it could be your family. It could be your kids. It could be, you know, the naysayers. Everybody telling you that you can't do something. You know, you have to find the motivation within. Everybody has a different reason for motivation. But, um, yeah, that long-term motivation, it has to come from within. So all gender fans who are watching me right now, wherever you are, keep yourself motivated, be positive. We'll all get through this together. 
uh, Jinder, um, we only got glimpses of your uh, home gym on social media. Could you yeah. please uh, give us a tour around right now? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the home gym is almost complete. I'm waiting for a squat rack still, a lat pull down, and a leg curl, leg extension machine. But I'm going to give you guys a tour of everything that I have so far. So here we got the medicine balls or the slam balls, 10, 20, 30, 50. So here are the assortment of bars. So I have like Olympic lifting bar, two power bars. Mm -hmm. This is called a safety squat bar. So it's a, you, you squat with it. It's, it kind of uh, gives you like a front squat. Then we have mm -hmm. an easy curl bar, you know, for doing biceps and triceps. All and right. then we have, the, we have this bar for, you can do presses and, uh, uh rows with it it just gives you a neutral grip so it's easy on the shoulders we have the bumper plates so we can slam around the weights you know have the rubber flooring so right. this is a good very good machine very versatile we have the uh, cable crossover you can do many things on here so this is a belt squat i still have to uh, screw it into the ground but basically you squat with a belt around your waist and you don't have to All hold right. it on your shoulders so it's good for your back and everything then we have the, this is called a glute ham raise. So you can do a variety of exercises. You can do hyper extensions for your lower back. You can do uh, sit-ups on it, or you can work your hamstrings on it. Mm -hmm. Then we got all the dumbbells, five to 100 pounds. This right here is the piece of cardio equipment that I've been using. It's the Airdyne bike. So there's a fan in it. So the harder you push, you pedal wow. and you and you use these handles, the harder it becomes because of the fan. Then we have the plyo box, do jumps on it, everything on here. Then we have the bench, adjustable bench. Oh, And nice. dumbbells that I was doing curls with. So that's the so home these are the mean machine that These are the mean machines that make the beast a modern day Maharaja. And we are all waiting to see you back in action on WWE where you pin down your opponents. We, we just can't wait for you to do that as soon as possible. We are all very excited on that front. But Jinder, I've seen some of your posts where you've uh, mentioned about occlusion training. So yeah. is it, we know all about it because you briefly explained it on Instagram, but is it more effective than uh, weight training or CrossFit? How is it? Um, I want to say it's more effective everything is effective a any type of exercise is effective but you need a variety i like to switch it up some weeks i'll do occlusion training the good thing with occlusion training is if you don't have a lot of equipment or you don't have heavy weights it makes it more effective the weights that you have if you use the occlusion training bands and you do lightweight and you do very high reps short break you will get an awesome pump an awesome workout in a short amount of time and with minimal equipment like um so when, the, when uh, the gyms first closed, when the quarantine happened, I was just working out with bands only, and I was getting like full body workout with just an elastic band. So right. it is possible. <laughs> or, I mean, uh, like, even if you don't have a dumbbell, you can use water jug, <laughs> right? It's just, ah, you, so you just have to get creative if you don't have the equipment. But if you have the equipment, it's nice. Everything is good. CrossFit is good. Weight training is good. Cardio is good. We just need to do something. You know, something is better than nothing always. Absolutely. Where there is a will, there is a way. But I always have a will to work out. Yet, there's one thing that I am weak at. And I'm sure most women go through it. Because on Life Connect, it's not just about knowing you. It's also about learning something from uh, a champion such as you. So can you help us with... Uh, women find it difficult to do push-ups. Yeah. Can you help us with the easier and the right form to do a push-up? Yeah, so I'll show women and men. It's very, very similar. So we get down here, right? So, so if you're a woman and you want to do push-ups, you can do it with your knees on the ground. So what you want to do is like uh, kind of shoulder width apart. My knees, are, my knees are down. Keep your core nice and tight. And you can push down and up. And if you're a man or you're more an advanced fitness female, then you can do it this way. Chest down. A, a lot of people do like, are like, they have their hips up. I am one of them. <laughs> so you, you know what I mean? You want to keep your body straight as possible. Like uh, keep your core tight, whether knees, uh -huh. knees down, same thing. You know, just a nice motion. And you can... 
you can start with what, whatever you're comfortable with. If one is all you can do, you know, do one every day and soon you'll be doing two. Soon you'll be doing three. So, you know, wherever, don't be, uh, you know, don't think like, oh, okay, I can only do one or I can only do a few. I'm not going to do it. You know, everybody's at different level. You know, there are some beginners, some are more advanced, but, you know, everybody starts somewhere. So, you know, just start basic, build a good foundation, build off good form and go from there. So keeping the form right is key. Yeah, yeah. Good form is the most important thing and it will prevent any injuries and everything. And uh, over the long run, you know, you can build off a good foundation of good basics. Now that we got a chance uh, to see you, to see your home gym and you've done some amazing push-ups for us, can you flex your muscles a little bit, please? Ah. <laughs> ah, ah, so this that's is it, like Fantastic. All your fans are writing, oh, 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 oh. I don't know why they're saying oh when they should say wow. <laughs> it is phenomenal to see that. Um, looking at your body, your muscles, have you ever thought of featuring in films? Because uh, some of your comrades like The Rob, Batista, and even The Great Kali, they featured in films. So any plans on that end? Um. Yeah, I would like to. Uh, just right now, my main focus is WWE, but in the future, definitely, I, uh, I'm up for the challenge because I know it is difficult. I respect, you know, acting very much. It's very much a performance art, and it is a very art, and it's very difficult. And I'm up for the challenge. It's, uh, it would teach me a new skill and everything. So yeah, definitely down, uh, down the line, I could see myself, you know, getting into acting. Whoa, you don't know how excited and happy our fans are here to, uh, to hear that. Uh, what about Bollywood films? Would you like to feature in Bollywood films? Yeah, yeah, of course. I think I would make a good villain. So, <laughs> so my next question is, uh, Varun Dhawan is a young uh, Bollywood actor, very famous actor. He follows yeah. you. He loves WWE. Yeah. Would you like to feature in a film with him? Yeah, yeah, of course. Varun is a uh, you know, very prominent member of the WWE Universe, big fan. I met him uh, when, we, when we came for the match over there. And actually, he's done a lot of interaction with WWE superstars when they come to India. Yeah, definitely. I'm a big fan of his. And, uh, you know, he's a big WWE fan. So I think that's a natural uh, uh, pairing for, yeah, definitely. I would love to. And what about... Uh... An actress who who you'd like to share the screen space with? So I'm a little bit old school. I like when I <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, I liked uh, Kajal and Ashwarya Rai, Rani Mukherjee. You know, these were my favorites. Um, you know, Karishma Kapoor. So maybe Karina Kapoor. Oh, but yeah. I, I like the cho I like. In fact, I like all your choices. I want you to pick one. Don't make it so difficult for us. Okay, let's go Kajal from uh, from my childhood. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to age. She's still I very think young, you picked up the best option because even I love her personally. She's so expressive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but all uh, of them talking are good. about, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I said all of them are good. I would, I would love to, you know, be in. All a, of them are great, but all of them are great. Yeah. Kajal, it is Kajal. If you're hearing. Jinder right now, he'd like to pair with you in a Bollywood film and we'd all be excited to see that. Uh, well, yeah. Jinder, you won the WWE title in 2017 and you came to India. It was an incredible tour. Even I have some fond memories of it. What is that one thing that you miss about India the most? Uh, I miss the passion of the fans. It's unlike anywhere I've ever experienced. You know, we travel everywhere in the world, but the, the passion that yeah, the Indian WWE Universe had when I came for the tour and then also for the match. I would say the passion, like our, our number one viewership is in India. And that's for a reason, you know, they love WWE. So, you know, hopefully I come back soon, uh, whether it's to wrestle or just to visit. And I would obviously love to wrestle, but uh, definitely, hopefully soon I can come back. We would love to have you back in India because our fans love you so much. See the hearts that are coming in on the live video at the moment. Um, Jinder, you also got a chance to meet the god of cricket, Sachin Tendulkar. Yeah. During that tour. How was your experience with him? Yeah, awesome. He was very, very nice. Uh, I got to go to his home and meet him and his son. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, he was very, very humble. 
very nice guy and uh, you know he's he's the god of cricket he's the greatest player that's ever played and uh, it was an honor for me to you know meet him so uh yeah it was definitely awesome it, it, it was kind of unexpected too like I, I didn't know that i was going to meet him like it wasn't planned earlier just that day we got like some communication came through wwe that you know sachin tendulkar has invited you to his house i was like wow i was you know i was blown away because because in the USA, that's like uh, someone like maybe Michael Jordan, um, you know, uh, LeBron James, something like, you know, like, there's no bigger, like, that's the biggest. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, you know, the greatest of all time. So, yeah, it was an honor for me to meet him. Although uh, your fans love you, but right now, since you're talking about Sachin Tendulkar and how you met him and how he invited you, you have no idea how jealous they are of you at the moment. But talking <laughs> about my, and I want to talk about my first encounter with you. So they told me I'm going to be um, uh, interviewing this um, mega star WWE Indian uh, champion. And I was like, okay, I did a research. I saw your photographs. I was like, wow, I'm going to nail this, bro. And you know what happened when you walked in on set? What happened? I was like, whoa. No, you know, no. The snapping was so intimidating. I felt like a chihuahua. I did. <laughs> no. I did. No. Yeah, but no, it, it was you know, it was fun. I enjoyed it. We we did the episode of uh, Tamal, right? So, Sunday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it was fun. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I was actually blown away by the set and everything. It, it was amazing. Yes, it was indeed a yeah, phenomenal so, set. But yeah, was Salil was, was there. Yes, he was there. Yeah, yeah. No, it was awesome. Good experience. Yes, it was. The, the set was great, but what was even much better was you. You made me feel, and you made me, Salim, the entire team feel so comfortable. The interview was bad. It was fantabulous. So, uh, on that end, uh, what are the Indian dishes that uh, you tried when you were in the tour? <laughs> uh, Indian dishes on that tour? Um... <sighs> I can't remember, but <laughs> uh, we we just ate at the hotel, but whatever, whatever it was, it was good. We had a couple <laughs> buffets, but uh, my favorite is Punjabi food. I like everything from dal, which is lentil soup, makki di roti. Uh, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saag is. Uh, uh, Parathas. Parathas, yeah, yeah. Alu paratha is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. I love uh, day yogurt, uh, makani the butter, right? So, you know, this is my, my favorite, but I like butter chicken also. I like, uh, I like goat, bakra. <laughs> bakra is nice. good. Yeah, Punjabi. I like Punjabi style cooking. But I, I like um, even, uh, recently I had dosa. I even like that. Yeah, it was really good. Dosa Sweet, was, it's dosa nice. Was good. Nice to know that you've tried different variety, different cuisines uh, of Indian food. Uh, but my favorite is the paratha. So next time you come to um, uh, India, I'm going to yeah. take you around to this really nice place uh, for parathas. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what, which one is it because it's going to be a surprise for you. So hope to see you soon in India. Yeah, yeah, well, definitely. So do you have any friends in the WWE fraternity besides the Singh brothers? Yeah, I have many friends. Friends with uh, with uh, everyone, mo mostly. But my main uh, friend that I used to travel with before I got hurt and go to work out with was Drew McIntyre, now WWE champion. So from our history together being in 3MB, we were released at the same time uh, in 2014. And, you know, much like myself, he's made a big comeback and he's become WWE champion. Uh, so yeah, Drew's my good friend, but um, a lot, lot of new guys right now in the locker room. A new, uh, like new generation guys from NXT. You know, they're all super cool. But before my old riding partner, everything was great. Kali, I spent a couple of years. I was his driver. You know, I used to do all the driving, and we used to travel together. So those are my main two travel partners for many years. Great Kali, and then Drew McIntyre. I know we enjoyed the Punjabi prison match uh, with Great Kali. Are we going to get a chance to see a Punjabi prison match again? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, I mean, it is a very tough, tough match. It's grueling. It was so painful. The, it was so solid, the Punjabi prison match. Like, if you, if, you, if you go to shake it, it's like it's heavy. It's thick, thick steel. I know it looks like bamboo, but, 
you know, it's steel. It's, it's, it was a grueling match. But, yeah, hopefully, if, you know, when the conditions are right, right opponent, you know, right, like, you know, just, you know, it has to be a big, big feud with someone to go in the Punjabi prison because it's, you know, you're going into the prison, you're not the same person when you come out. Like, physically, emotionally, everything is very, very taxing. Okay. But you made it look so easy, Jinder. Like, the way you're telling it looked tough. I was like, wow, this man is, like, killing it. <laughs> uh, thank you, but yeah, it's tough. Hopefully we can do it again someday. And uh, besides COVID-19 and you getting back on WWE, there's another news that's making headlines that Donald Trump uh, has appointed uh, Vince McMahon as one of the financial advisors. What's your take on that one? Uh, I think it's more so as an advisor as to when to open everything up as in the sporting events. I think it's very, it's very good because WWE is, you know, a main player in the world of sports and in entertainment. I mean, WrestleMania is, is as big as anything in the world. Uh, you know, it's just as big as the Super Bowl, if not bigger here in the United States. So, you know, having someone like Vince who very much has his, uh, you know, his finger on the pulse of what's going on. I think it's, it's a good sign. And, uh, you know, we're all in this together and together we're going to get through this. And whenever it's safe, you know, for everybody and, um, uh, you know, safe for the performers and everything. Because right now, WWE is doing a very good job in the Performance Center of making sure everybody's safe and social distancing. And, and uh, you know, everybody's doing their part of staying healthy. But whenever it's safe, you know, I can't wait to have the WWE Universe uh, there again, and that'll happen, you know, when when um, when the government and everything, uh, you know, says so. And it's good to know that Vince is uh, is an advisor in that board. And, you know, Vince, I'm sure, you know, he's not going to rush into anything until uh, everything is safe, because ultimately we all care about everybody's health and safety is is number one. Absolutely. I enjoyed speaking with you, Jindal, but right now we quickly head to the Mad Rad segment of Life Connect in association with Cineblitz. So uh, you, your answers have to be either rad or totally mad. No serious. All the serious talk is out now. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So my first question, and it's like a rapid fire round. It has to be quick as possible. All right. Okay. What do you call? What do you call a hot chick in Punjabi? Sony. Sony Kodi. Are wah! Fantastic, Jinder. I love that. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect you to know it, but I was. I'm glad you do. Yeah. All right. In uh, wrestling, in the wrestling world, who is your nemesis? Randy Orton. Mm. So one day, if you wake up to see yourself as Randy Orton, what would you do? <laughs> I wish I was Jinder Mahal, the modern name Maharaja. Ah, you got me on that one. If your house was on fire, which were uh, which are the two things that you would run back to get in? Uh, my gym equipment <laughs> and my two dogs. Oh, I didn't know you had pets. Yeah, yeah, I have two dogs. Uh, rank these moves in order of your preference. Super kick, gut buster, class, jumping, high knee strike. Class number one, jumping knee strike number two, uh, the boot three. And four Sorry? is. So, class number one, number two, jumping mm -hmm. knee, number three, right. boot. What was the other one? All right. Uh, super kick, yeah, gut buster. One. Oh, but that's for that's me, cool. I, I have always enjoyed your jumping, uh, jumping high knee strike. I love it. I love the way you do it. You're like, like a flying saucer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we move to the next. Do you dance crazy when no one's watching? No. Maybe in the shower. Maybe. Mm, we caught you right there. So after the lockdown ends, who's the first person you rush to meet? Uh, great Kali. He's in India, so, so that's an excuse so for me to come. So you have to the travel to India. Yay, so we get to meet you. Fantastic. Like any song that you like of me cussing. Uh, Subha Hone Na Be, Subha Hone Na Be. Raat Kone Na Be, Ek Dusre Ko. Come on, hero. I want to see the masking hero. 
you know what she must be fantastic you're such a sport and such a sweet heart in that it was so much fun chatting with you thank you so much for your time thank you for joining us on live connect in association with cineblix Uh, awesome. Thank you guys very much. Before you leave, before you leave, before you leave, I'd like you to give a message for your friends. I just want to say thank you for everybody uh, for supporting me, especially through my injury. I got a lot of you guys' messages, and now that I'm back, uh hopefully, you know, I'm going to continue dominating the WWE universe and one day I will again become WWE champion. Yo, way to go. Jinder Mahal rocks and forever you rule our hearts Jinder all i can say is before you leave thank you so much loads of love take care and uh, keep those fitness videos coming in because sometimes people like me need some motivation you see <laughs> awesome we'll do thank you guys very much take care yeah, take care